بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم احنا هنبدا و اي ويل احنا هنتكلم ان انجلش عشان دكتور محمد تلب اي ثينك ذيس سيشن ويل ستارت ويل سبوز تو ستارت ات 9 بس وي ديليت سام وات اباوت 20 مينتس اند ات ويل بي ان ذا فورم اوف تو سيكشن سيكشن نمبر 1 ويل ديسكاس ذا سكيلز ان ذا اكيوت ستروك مانجمنت either skills clinical, either skills radiological, intra-hospital, pre-hospital. And uh, the second section will be dedicated for the uh, neuroimaging. And uh, there will be a very uh, keynote spe speech by uh, Professor uh, Abdelaziz al uh, about the MRI in, uh, in uh, acute ischemic stroke. The uh, last session, uh, our section, will be uh, dedicated for scenarios, different scenarios, how to implement the workflow in your department for ischemic stroke, for hemorrhagic stroke, and for endovascular treatment of acute ischemic stroke. And uh, I will uh, start by uh, Professor uh, Mohammed Taleb. Uh, thankfully, he joined us today, and I think in, uh, it's uh, very uh, early uh, in his location now. It's about 2 a.m. Uh, uh, professor Mohammed Taleb, he is uh, um, a pro associate professor in uh, uh, Panner University Medical Center, Arizona, in uh, USA, and he is originally Egyptian. Uh, however, uh, his Arabic language is somewhat uh, uh, fragmented, uh, and uh, uh, he is specialized in the endovascular uh, uh, treatment and uh, uh, critical uh, uh, neurology. Uh, management, and uh, he will talk us about the um, pre-hospital skills. Dr. Mohammed. First of all, uh, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm truly honored, and I uh, uh, feel blessed to have the opportunity to present. And my talk is about LVO screening in, in the field, pre-hospital LVO screening tools. This is similar to what I presented at the International Stroke Conference, and they had wanted me to mention LVA tool. Uh, LVO tools, but also talk about the tool that I developed, VAN, and that's what I'll be doing. Um, I'll try to go through this quickly. Um, many of the audience may already know some of this, and then at the end, um, I'm uh, going to give some uh, tips and uh, how I think the field is going to be changing. So first of all, just disclosures. Um, I am a consultant for Stryker, Penumbra, and Serenovus, but I really haven't done any talks and uh, lately over the past year and a half, and none of the consulting I've ever gotten has anything to do with these, um, uh, with this talk. So uh, this is not supported by any relationships. So before I start, um, you know, everyone always asks, which scale or why? Well, I ask you, what is the goal, right? Is the goal to catch as many large vessel occlusions as possible, or is the goal to be as sp specific so you don't over triage, right? And so I think that's a question that has to be answered locally. So I don't believe one size fits all. Um, how many comprehensive stroke centers do you have? How fast are your transfer times from primary centers to comprehensive centers. Um, to me, there is no better. There is what fits my community needs. And I think this has to be really de de determined by the infrastructure, by the epidemiology um, uh, of where you're implementing this tool. So I'm gonna review the current tools because how I see them, there's two tools, right? There's quantitative, the classic ones like race, uh, fast ED, Cincinnati Pre-Hospital Stroke Severity Scale, there's NIH 8, there's all these different ones where you add up numbers, like this is zero, this is one, this is two, and then you add up numbers for face, arm, and leg, and then you do speech, zero, one, two, and then there's what's called qualitative, like van positive, van negative, which is basically van, which is a tool I invented, was the first one that says, no, let's make that paradigm shift from quantitative to qualitative. And that's really how you have to look at it. And there's positives and negatives to both. So fast van 
is the one they use in Canada, which basically under vision, they just look for gaze. Under aphasia, can they name watch and pen? And um, the, th uh, the third one is neglect. So are they ignoring their like left body? And that's it. You just have to be fast positive with any of those. So it's, that's fast van out of Canada. There's Elvo out of Japan. Act fast. Um, uh, all right. Um, out of um, Australia is really is just severe van. It's very similar to fast van out of um out of Canada, uh, but you have to have severe arm weakness. And then they uh, look for gaze under vision, aphasia or neglect. You know, they tap the left shoulder lo looking for neglect, but that's really a severe van. And then pass to me, even though you have to have two things, you're not really adding, it's yes or no. And it's basically um, arm weakness plus either forced gaze or aphasia. Because I've never seen someone with forced gaze and aphasia with zero arm weakness. That's pretty rare. That's usually a non-dominant left MCA uh, M2 frontal branch, right? That's really where you, you would see that. Uh, and that's pretty rare, right? So in essence, passes arm weakness with either forced gaze or aphasia. Um, and so that's that's basically it. There's some other ones which combine qualitative with, with quantitative. And one is save, there's Lario out of uh, Italy. And then I actually made a, a tool called Van 2.0 where you can actually download the app and it'll tell you severe weakness and the number of cortical symptoms. And it'll tell you where the clot is based off of the symptoms. So these are all, um, this is basically all the tools out there. So, you know, I like to give you the overall picture, then I'll go into, into, into details because I believe you have to look from high up to see the entire earth, but then you have to zoom to get to the d details. And it's a lot easier when you're looking from the top, okay, this is what the scales are, okay, and then, and then you can take, take a look at them. So summary of scales, they're add up weakness, a number of cortical symptoms, and they have some cut off. And what's the ideal cut off for specificity versus sense sensitivity, right? Um, and really, do they have any weakness with, with, with their cortical symptoms and which cortical symptoms and how weak are they? That's really what all the scales are, okay? So what you can do is, and, and I'll show this based on literature, but again, I like to do summary then I'll go into, 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 into detail, right? Uh, give the big picture first. Um, so rule out LVO scales, okay? Really, so th these ones, the qual qualitative are more like NHO scale of six. They only miss about 10 to 30%, but they're less what, they're less specific, but more sensitive. The other ones are really, they they try to be more like an NHO scale of 10. So they miss 20 to 65%, but they're more specific, right? And so all of these classic ones are the rule in versus rule out, right? Um, that's another way that I think of them. So um, basically this is from my website, but it's basically saying this is all the cortical symptoms, right? And if you want to look for basal artery thrombosis, you look for uneven eyes or, uh, or, 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 or disconjugate gazes, and then you, you can identify basers as well. But really, this is all they are. And can, can you, uh, Dr. Abdurrahman, can you see my arrow here? Pointing at yeah. frontal gaze center, yeah, and then yeah. ability to talk, and then you 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 can see this. This is basically all the scales. Some of them only test ability to understand arm, face, and leg weakness, and and and, and neglect, which is race, right? They they don't test vision loss, right? Visual fields, and they don't have you name objects, right? But they do test frontal gaze center, arm, and leg ability to understand and and, and neglect, and then you know. Um, Cincinnati Pre Hospital Stroke Severity Scale, they actually have you name objects, but they don't have you uh, name things and they don't test neglect or vision, right? So you can almost tell every scale based off of this. So here's race, which basically has all these little areas, right? It's motor weakness used in all large vessel screening tools due to central location, as we see here, right? As well as its links length to functional independence, right? Because the functional in independence, um, you know, is based off of can you walk, can, can you take care of yourself? And that's why motor weakness is such a huge part. And this is basically it. And as you see here, and I believe um, uh, uh, 
uh, Dr. Mansour has uh, implemented race in, um, in, 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 in some parts of, of Egypt as well. So I, I'm, I'm sure some of the audience is, is um, you know, um, uh, knows about this as well. And you're basically adding up numbers here, as you see, okay, for phase zero, one, two, and then if it's above, greater than or equal to five, then you say they're possible LVO, right? So LA motor scale is the only one that only tests weakness, right? And really, so how do they get away with that, right? It doesn't test for any cortical symptoms as you can see on this brain diagram, right? So how do they do that? You see this because most people with severe weakness have an LVO, but it's not vice versa. So this is from a study that was from University of Massachusetts and you can see in dark black, see this? A lot of LVOs, NIH say less than 10, about 50%, right? And so you get away with you only using weakness because most of the severe weakness, as you see here, most of the severe weakness, right, has an LVO. But it's not vice versa, right? Which is why we have the endolo trial, endolo, which is endovascular treatment for low NIH. Why? Because we know. There's lots of people that have minor weakness within aphasia that have an LVO and they can go into collateral failure. And depending on which study you look at, anywhere from 25 to 60% can go to collateral failure. So, um, you know, again, nothing is perfect. You know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. All right. So Cincinnati Hospital Stroke Severity Scale, th this is what it is. You, 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 you follow com, com, com commands, right? Answer both cor cor correctly, level of consciousness and, um, uh, and following commands, right? And then, and then arm strength and, and, and gaze deviation. And again, someone told me this, it was an excellent insight. They're like, how many people have zero arm weakness, right? Uh, with aphasia or, or forced gaze, right? But here you automatically get two points for forced gaze because that's the best predictor of, um, of large vessel occlusion. But here's the thing though. So the thing is, since you have pre-hospital stroke severity scale, it actually uses falls to bed, which is severe weakness, right? When people do it in the field, they, they don't do it this, 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 this way sometimes because I've noticed that, oh yeah, they like have arm weakness. I like give them, give them one point. This, it doesn't always happen that way. But anyway, that's another side note. But basically it's arm weakness because it's, it's the best predictor um, um, of that. Fast ED, again, very similar, but, um, and they test almost the same thing as we do with VAN, but they don't test for visual fields, right? It's the same thing, right? All the same thing, face, arm, speech. Um, and they actually do have you do name, name three objects and then follow two commands. And then, and then eye, eye deviation, which is gaze, which we uh, put under vision and then de denial or neglect. Another one is pass. We talked about this as well. Uh, you have to have two out of the three. Can you correctly name month and age? Yes or no. Gaze, uh, gaze palsy and or deviation. Okay. Uh, yes or no. And then arm weakness like yes or no. And you have to have two out of the three. And again, um, very rare that I see forced gaze and inability to, to talk with no arm weakness, but it can happen. Rare, but it can happen. So to me, this is almost like like a modified van, arm weakness with a cortical symptom. Um, so what is your goal? So someone told me I was supposed to give a talk about race versus van. I actually just gave a talk to Michigan and they had myself on and Dr. Uh, uh, Natalia from, um, from uh, Barcelona. Um, and so she gave a talk on race and like I gave a talk on van. And like I said, race is excellent because I think it's very specific. Um, and it's sensitive, sensitive enough. Is it going to catch most things? Most of the time, but you're still, still miss about, you know, 40% of, 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 of LVOs. But I think it's very difficult to do both. So again, it's all about your epidemiology. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to catch as many as possible? Or are you trying to only bypass um, when you have very high specificity, right? So this is VAN. This is basically what we use. And under vision, we have gaze. You have to have arm weakness. If you have no arm weakness, you're done in 10 seconds. No arm weakness, done in 10 seconds, you're van negative. If you have arm weakness, then you test for vision, gaze, 
you know, can they look towards the right or left? And then aphasia, I mean, um, uh, visual fields, look at my nose, how many fingers, two, how many, one. If and, if and if they don't test anything, then say vision loss on right or vision loss on left. Aphasia, usually with right-sided weakness, as you know, they can't name watch or pen and follow commands, close eyes, make fist. And then the last thing is is ignoring left body. And then in, in Canada, they, they just do the first thing, gaze, and the first thing in aphasia naming difficulties and ignoring it, you know, so this is basically uh, what some people are using in the field. They call it fast van where they're only testing gaze, right? Um, the optimal scale, this came out in uh, 2017 uh, from the American Stroke Association as well. Really don't know what the optimal scale is, but it has to have ha high high accuracy. I identify LVO versus no LVO, validated in external data sets. And lots of these are being uh, evaluated. And I will say there's just a randomized trial that came out, uh, which I didn't add to my power slides and I apologize about that, but it showed most of the LVO scales worked similarly, uh, except the sensitivity and, and specificity were uh, different. One would be more sensitive, one would be more specific, but race did turn out to be very good as well, the overall accuracy. But they said the overall accuracy is better, but you missed about, you know, I think 40% of like LVOs. Um, um, and so uh, that, that study, I believe, was in Holland or Denmark. Um, I will have to take, take, take a look at that. But nonetheless, even when they tested all these scales together, that's basically what they found, what I'm going to go over right now. So this was a, a, tr um, a um, retros retrospective study it said clinical prediction of LVO mission impossible. And they said, uh, this is the group, um, Urs Fischer's group out of Switzerland. Um, and here you can see race would miss 50%. Three item stroke severity scale would miss 75%. Cincinnati would miss 50%. And here you can see the odds ratio is basically van. Motor weakness, gaze, or visual fields under vision, aphasia, or neglect, right? Leg weakness, not as good. Facial palsy, not as good. Um, you know, uh, um, the LOC um, uh, uh, questions and commands, not, not, not as good. It's true aphasia, ne neglect, or visual fields. Um, with, with gaze is really the best predictor. And that's really what all the scales are testing in a sense. Then here's another one. They looked at how about if you have baseline leukoareosis, right? Or baseline deficits, right? And here's what they showed is like the ones that test severity are better because if you have, say you have an old stroke or or white matter change, you have minor weakness within aphasia, you tend to um, you know, the ones that are qualitative will say that's a new stroke, but it, you know, it's really unmasking of an old stroke. But again, what's very interesting is NIHOXA less than 10, 50% of LVOs had NIHOXA less than 10. And what's interesting is here they compared VAN, but look at this and all the other scales, race, fast ED, look at the sensitivity, only picking up 50%. Here uh, they missed 60%. Van picked up 70%, right? They only missed 30%, but then the specificity was the opposite, right? <laughs> and so the, the, you know, the positive predictive value you can see for these um, three atom stroke severity scale, Van, Cincinnati, and Prospero stroke severity scale was about 30 for all of them, right? 35% for fast ED and 40% for race. But then you have to realize you're gonna miss a lot, right? And so you really can't have your cake and eat it too. And this is what's interesting. If they adjust um, MCA and M1s only, they didn't include M2s, M3s, Baselers or, or PCAs, right? Which now the, all the new literature is saying we should go after M2s. We should start going after PCAs and Baselers, right? If you add all those, you look at the area under the curve just with M1s, you can see race and fast ED and then van right underneath them, right? And then you look, if you put everything in, you see how they're all fast ED, right? Race and van. The area under the curve is, is similar. Why is it similar, right? Because one is more sensitive and one is more specific, right? And um, so um, I'm actually gonna go over this, but in, in general, your definition of LVO will determine what your study results are. If you don't include M2s, M3s, 
uh, basilars, PCA, PP1, P2s that g have flow into the thalamus, which can give you hemiplegia, thalamic pain syndrome. You, you know, that determines actually what your study results are. So your definition of an LVO determines what your study res results are. And this is very important when reading papers, right? And to me, accuracy is a relationship between prevalence, sensitivity, and specificity. Meaning, if your prevalence is 50%, you want the more sensitive tool, right? If your prevalence is only 10%, you want the more specific tool, because then it's more accurate. So it all depends on, on the prevalence, right? And this is the relationship here. As your prevalence goes up, it's much more prevalent. You don't want a specific tool that misses 60%, because then you're going to miss a lot of people, right? If your prevalence is only 5%, you want something that's more specific and less sensitive because it's okay. Say if you only have two out of 100 people and it's 50%, you've, you're, you're only missing one, right? If you have 50 people and you're missing 50%, you're missing 25 people, right? So this is where I, I think epidemiology is the key on which, which tool to use. Uh, Penn State did a study where they retrospectively looked at everything. Again, it's proving my point over and over again, but they looked at a thousand patients. And here you can see uh, race performed the worst. It only identified 72%, whereas in van per per performed the best and it identified 89%. Pre-hospital de uh, detection remains a hot topic. Van appears to show great promise, but validation of its specificity um, has not been proven um, um, adequately assessed. And here it is in Neuro News International. And here again, you see the same relationship with the more sensitive is, is less specific, right? And the overall accuracy is different, right? Um, so what I'm saying is uh, there's there's nothing that's that's perfect, right? We just have to, to realize that. Um, so I presented this at the um, International Stroke Conference in, in 2019. Um, um, this was the abstract. This 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 is a talk that I did give. Uh, it's very similar to the talk I gave in International Stroke Conference in 2020. So if someone was there, you you know th this is similar stuff that I presented uh, in 2020 at the International Stroke Conference. But anyway, so we actually looked at multiple areas and we did VAN and we did 241 patients. And yeah, it's positive predictive value was 33%. NIH stroke sales, um, stroke scale of six or higher, which is what the American Stroke Association recommends. And it performed almost the same as the NIH stroke scale of six, right? With an accuracy of about 66%. Um, so no one that has read the literature will, will argue. Van are qualitative scales closer to NIH stroke scale of six. But someone asked me, who cares about LVOs without severe weakness? Well, I do, and you do, and your patients do, because you know, 25 to 40% go into collateral failure, right? And if you have minor weakness, but you can't talk, to you, that's a disabling sim symptom. Again, I'm not saying what to do, and I think every region will do what they want, but this is a paper too good to intervene. And uh, this was out of, um, this is the group. Oh, sorry. This is the group out of Emory. This is Dr. No no Noguera's group. And you can see uh, here about 41% went into collateral failure. Uh, and these were NIH scales of five or less, right? With very minor weakness with a cortical symptom, right? Um, so yes, most primary, you know, another thing is for us, most primary stroke centers don't have neurorads and 20% of our LVOs were missed. Hopefully Viz and Rapid can help with that, but you just saw Viz, the paper that came out in AJNR, American Journal of Neuroradiology. Viz misses 20% of LVOs. And if you count M2s and M3s, I think it's closer to 30%. Uh, but anyways, so the app I made, you can you can download it, uh, Stroke Van, one word, either Apple or, or Google Play, and you can put in the symptoms. So someone called me, he, they're like, no, I have the patient with aphasia, forced gaze, and severe weakness, um, but they're able to follow commands. And radiology said there's nothing there. Do they follow commands? Yes. Is there a neglect? No. Let's plug it into Van, and it localizes to Superior M2. Here it is, Superior M2. See that? I went in, did a thrombectomy, and the patient is back to normal now. Here's another one, right? Mild weakness with neglect and visual field cut. Here it is. Um, 
I, I, I call this an M3 clot, right? There's likely an M3 clot, right? Around the Sylvian fissure, maybe M2, M3 junction, right? And again, clot out, right? And so um, it, 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 it all depends on what your goals are. I, um, I think VAN is a beautiful way to identify strokes, especially in the hospital and tell you who needs a CTA and perfusion, who do you need to really think, hey, this guy could go into collateral failure. We, we have to get everyone involved early. Um, and my problem is, yeah, the collateral failure is real. Um, and uh, yeah, um, and I think, uh, you know, uh, it's important to identify these patients. So this is another, they looked at 2,200 patients in this study, which was done, um, I think, uh, Dr. Fisher's group as well out of Switzerland. And they looked at NIH for LVOs, depending on when you presented, right? So if you present from zero to three hours, uh, posterior circulation and, and anterior circulation, your average NIH was high, nine. But look, when you present three to six hours, average NIH stroke scale is seven. You present between six to 24 hours, your average NIH stroke scale is four. Why is that? Because the collaterals are taking longer to fail and you just get weak at six or seven hours, then you come in, right? But that brain can slowly die. And I'm sure we've seen this multiple times. So this becomes a problem for me because if we're using severity to identify strokes and LVOs between six and 24 hours, well, this says you shouldn't be using severity. You should be using any minor weakness with a cortical symptom, right? Because the average NIH is four or five for these LVOs that present between six to 24 hours, okay? And this is for anterior circulation. Posterior circulation, they all present LVOs, NIH stroke scale of five, anytime, three to six hours, zero to three, three to six, six to 24. If you combine both of them, same effect, right? And so this begs to uh, differ. Do you just use an NIH scale of 10? You're going to be missing lots of potential LVOs that can go into collateral failure. Um, so in the end, I, this is another paper, same thing, saying that if you want something that's very s sensitive, it's not going to be specific. And um, this is very interesting because they said that 70% sensitive, but 80% of van negative patients who had an LVO had no weakness. They had no arm weakness whatsoever. And so this tells you if the most sensitive tool is still missing about 30%, I think it's more like 10 to 20%, but still, you know, this is interesting. So imagine what the one that only has severe weakness with cortical symptoms does or only severe weakness. I, and I have proven it's more like 30 to 50% are being missed. Here's an, another one looking at different time scales. And again, it's saying Cincinnati Piotr Stroke Severity Scale um, and VAN were the ones that, you know, that identified the most LV, uh, LVOs. Uh, same, same thing, conclusion. This is that International Stroke Conference to correctly identify as many patients as possible in the pre-hospital setting with the available scores. The data suggests CSTAT and VAN and MAPS are effective within the early and late windows to identify the most patients. If you want um, reduced routing for um, pre-hospital LVOs, you should use ones that really rely on really se severe symptoms. Again, saying the same thing, you can't have sensitivity plus specificity. To me, they're all the same. You're testing some sort of arm weakness. The best one is arm. So some sort of weakness, face, arm, or leg with a cortical symptom. And which one you test is really up to you depending on which scale. That's it. We're all neurologists. We're all testing the same thing. It's all about what you want to, to test. Uh, this is, so this was the quantitative uh, ones. These are the qualitative ones, okay? Summary, more specific. Um, qu quantitative are more specific, longer. They add up number, uh, has more poor prospective e e EMS data. You will miss about, I would say not 20 to 30. I think you'll miss about 30 to 50% of LVOs now that more literature is out. Um, and you will not over triage. The positives with qualitative, it's more sensitive, can be faster and easier to do. Um, uh, 
depending on which scale, you can uh, use it to localize uh, prospective data only on, 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 on three cities, but there's more prospective data like, like coming out. And so really it's quantitative versus qualitative, and this is what we see. And in general, it makes sense. The more symptoms you test, the more um, sensitive, the less specific, the less you test, the more specific the, and, and less sensitive. Um, and so, yeah, and I already pointed this out, quantitative versus qualitative and what they mean. So this is, uh, we did a study here in Phoenix in 2016 to 2017. And I looked at where people are screening for LVOs, how many actually got a CTA within six for NIH Oxyl greater than six? Only 40%. Houston, we have a problem. So to me, I don't care what you do, but just screen for LVOs do the CTAs, right? Get the patient transferred faster. This was very disturbing to me when I knew 60% of patients were eligible for CTA and looking for thrombectomies were not getting the proper screening. Another thing is stroke mimics, right? This is a big thing, hemorrhage, seizures, brain tumors. You know, this becomes very difficult. So when you look at the original FAST ED, which was retrospective, they only looked at stroke codes. And so, you have to have a, a study out in the field which takes into account all these stroke mimics as well. Proposed solutions in the future, I think mobile stroke units. I think apps like Pulsera or, or, or other apps like Triage where you can actually do something in the field or communicate. Another thing is artificial intelligence where you do the exam from a phone and it'll tell you whether there's facial droop, whether there's aphasia, whether their eyes are forced over. And uh, some people are working on that as an app and an artificial intelligence, which will help you do the exam in the field. So, you know, these are some pr proposed solutions. Another thing is you can ask stroke mimic questions, right? And so ways to improve specificity for having endovascular procedure. You can use severe arm weakness, so it's more specific. You can use mandatory one-sided weakness. Mimics tend to have both sides weak, right? If you have low glucose or you have an infection, right? And then, um, or add up numbers and use the severity scales, right? But another thing, what we did is stroke mimic questions. Are they comatose? not caused by trauma, no brain tumor or brain malformation and glucose is normal and no seizure. So you rule all these things out. Then another thing is TPA criteria, last 12, not on blood thinners, no recent surgeries, no brain pathology, no bleeding disorders. Cause then you can call in and say, hey, they're not a TPA candidate, then it lets you know. And then for bypass, it has to be a new deficit within six hours because Past six hours, the percent that actually go to endovascular is much less. It's like five to 10%, right? Within six hours, it's a higher percent. Were they living independently? So you can ask if they were living independently for a modified ranking and pass a stroke mimic question. So all of these are negative and has severe arm weakness. And so this is something that you can use as well. So we do our van screening and then we ask all these questions, right? And if all of this, yes, new deficit, yes, within six hours, yes, living independently, uh, passes stroke mimics, yes, uh, he doesn't have seizures, they're not comatose, it's not caused by trauma, it's not brain tumor, the glucose is normal, and they have se severe arm weakness with a cortical symptom, then we, we, we bypass. So that's another option, right? Um, you know, so there's multiple ways to get sensitivity and specificity um, besides just se se severity. There's check boxes like these that look for mimics. So again, what is goal? What is your goal? Is it to get as many people as possible? Is it to do thrombectomy as fast as possible? Is it to get TPA started ASCP? Is it don't delay lowering blood pressure and brain bleeds for stroke mimics? Don't delay AVT, EVD or mannitol if it turns out to be a subdural or subarachnoid or ICH or tumor, or if it's a seizure, you know? So all these things have to be taken in, into account. Uh, so in the end, and uh, nothing really works for everyone, but I think uh, hopefully this has helped and has just shed a little light on quantitative versus qualitative scales. Other things, other solutions, you can do EEGs or some of these uh, caps in the field, right? Uh, which can go on your head and tell you if there's decreased blood flow to half the brain. Um, I do have a website. I think it's a mute point. Eventually there'll be technology which will make these scales 
LVO de de detection go out of style where you're going to be using apps and artificial intelligence and caps. But for right now, uh, I'm just going to do a, sh a shameless plug uh, for my um, uh, strokevan.com uh, and you can actually get and get, get certified there. Um, I'm going to open it up for uh, questions. Um, uh, and then we will go from uh, uh, there, okay? And one last thing is someone told me we will be looking for Arabic speaking audience. And, um, you know, I thought that this was cool. So someone told me, so how would you describe van or fast van? And so I said, well, to me, um, يعني pardon العربي بتاعي مكسر شوية بس لو حد سألني only van أو حاجة زي van باللغة العربية ف ف ف أنا قلت له vision بوس aphasia كلمني right بوس كلمني عبرني means pay attention to me or don't neg neglect get it بوس vision can you look to the right or left um, كلمني can you only إيدي um, ساعة ألم عبرني uh, are, are you neg neg neglecting the left side or do, or, or do you know that you are ig ignoring your left side? And so um, I thought this was uh, pr pr pretty funny. Um, so yeah, bus kalemni abarni. So uh, if if someone's having a, 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 a stroke, you can see if it's if it's a severe one. Uh, and, and, and any questions, comments? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Muhammad Taleb for this elegant presentation. <laughs>